Hello and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video, I'm going to be going through fertilizers and eutrophication. So if you are new here, then click subscribe and make sure you follow on the different platforms so you don't miss out on any of the latest content. So first of all, fertilizers, this links to the nutrient cycle. So the nitrogen cycle and the phosphorus cycle. And fertilizers are added to soil to replace the nitrates and the phosphates, which are lost when plants are harvested. And if they're harvested, they're therefore being removed from the cycle and taking those nutrients with them. So that's why we have to add fertilizers to replace the nitrogen and phosphates, which are lost. And there's two options. You can either use a natural fertilizer, which is animal manure, or it could be an artificial fertilizer, which is inorganic chemicals, which are synthesized. Now there's pros and cons to both. Natural fertilizers are much cheaper. In fact, they're free if you already own farm animals. The downside though is you have no control over the exact proportions of the different nutrients within the manure. So artificial fertilizers, that is their big benefit. You can control exactly which nutrients, minerals are within the fertilizer and the exact proportions to meet the needs of the crops that you're growing. The big downside though is they are very soluble in water. And the reason that's a disadvantage is they'll dissolve in the water within the soil, so the rainwater, and then they'll be more likely to leach or wash away into nearby rivers and that can have big negative impacts on the environment. There is an advantage though to them being highly soluble as well for the plants and that is they're more easy to be absorbed. So looking at the environmental impacts, I use the term leaching, what that means is the water soluble compounds, which in this case are the fertilizers, are dissolved within the rainwater. They'll then trickle through the soil and they'll wash away to nearby rivers or ponds. So that's what we mean by leaching. And that process of leaching leads to eutrophication. So eutrophication, we'll go through it step by step. The first thing, as we said, is the fact that the nutrients, and in this case nitrates, can be leached from the soil. And if that then reaches rivers and ponds, it will encourage the growth of the algae within that water. So you end up getting this blanket of algae on the top surface, and that's often called an algal bloom. And that blanket of algae blocks the sunlight from reaching any of the plants lower down in the water. And because there's no light reaching those plants, they cannot photosynthesize and they will die. Now those dead plants provide a food source for bacteria within the water. So those bacteria will be respiring and using up all of that dead plant matter. And the reason that is an issue is all of that bacteria respiring is using up the oxygen within that water. And if they've used up all of the water, that means other plant life and animal life won't be able to survive. So that's what we've got here. We've got some fish dying, unfortunately, because there's not enough oxygen dissolved in the water anymore. And that is what we mean by eutrophication. It's that whole process which eventually results in this anoxic or oxygen lacking water, which then means no life or very little life can be sustained. So that is it for fertilizers and eutrophication. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up.